Hey there, welcome to the Raising the Standard show. I'm Dr. Andrea Ramirez. With me today, I have my special co host, Dr. Gus Reyes. Good to be here with you. This is going to be a great program today. Yes, today we are talking about connecting with students. Right. What does that mean to you? You've been uh, uh, working with students for over 30 years. Well, what is that? Well, it is work. Bring up. It has something you do, you do intentionally. Yeah. But I think moms and dads, abuelitas out there, uh, they're, they're trying to connect with mm -hmm. students. And today's program is going to give them some handles and some helps to do a better job connecting with students for today and for the future. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we firmly believe that God has put you in the path of students yes, yes. for a reason. That of all the adults that they could have, that the Lord could have put in your path, He put specific sons and daughters, granddaughters and grandsons, primos in your path. And so we believe this show is a part of equipping you to help equip them to love the Lord with all of their minds. Um, we want to be sure that you know what we were doing in New York uh, at the New York station. We got a chance to sit down with uh, leaders in the area of the greater New York area. And actually, the leader that you're going to hear from today is from Pennsylvania. And just hearing wow. about what God is doing in the Northeast and know that the Lord is moving in all different pockets of the nation. And so we want you to benefit from getting to hear those leaders and firsthand to see what God is calling them to do and how he is helping them to execute those plans that he has for him. Amen. So hear from uh, Reverend Charles Olmeda. I know you will be blessed beyond belief from this interview and watch this and, and learn from Reverend Charles Olmeda. Hey, welcome to the Raising the Standard show. I'm Dr. Andrea Ramirez. Thanks for joining us. We're here at the New York Station, uh, TBN Station, and just thrilled to have Pastor Carlos Olmeda with us. I will tell you, we have had Pastor Olmeda on our list for two years. Uh, we're so excited that you're here. I'm particularly, I just feel like I'm in a surreal moment because we really have wanted to sit down and just pick your brain on some of the ministry that you've been doing. So let me just share for those at home a little bit about you. So you serve as the founder and president of uh, Solution Services Incorporated, an administering agency for the Advanced Mentoring Enrichment Network, also called AMEN, right? AMEN, Amen Initiative, an inner city mentoring and midnight, that's late, right, for, for a lot is. of us, midnight basketball, anti-gang and anti-drug initiative that has served more than 1,200 predominantly inner city youth there in Pennsylvania. So, welcome. Thank you. Thank so. you. What an honor. It's been an interesting journey this morning. Yes, to yes. To get here, got yes. stranded, had a tire blow. Out, That's right. Left my car out in New Jersey somewhere, <laughs> hopped on a train, got to the studio. So here oh. we are. God must have amazing things in store yes, for us. Yes, absolutely. But it is truly an honor. And, and first and foremost, let me, let me just say I'm so grateful for uh, Matt and Lord Crouch and yeah. certainly Reverend Rodriguez, yes, yeah. who provides the opportunity and the leadership. So yeah. a shout out to them. Yes, thank you for. They're wonderful, and God has given them such profound gifts. And Indeed. as the body, we get to benefit from that. I think Indeed. it's so beautiful when each of us can, can share those. So, um, well, I wanted to dive into this idea idea of mentoring and just kind of start there. Um, th walk us through how basketball connects with mentoring and even with education. Yeah. You know, uh, great question. I'll go back a little further uh, mm -hmm. because um, I remember sitting in a forum for returning citizens. Mm -hmm. We were spearheading, I was president of the Conference of Churches there in the region, mm -hmm. and I was spearheading a, an initiative mm -hmm. of returning citizens coming out of prison, mm -hmm. going back into society. Mm -hmm. And as part of that forum, we had a, a, a just enormous amount of people that started venting about the prison system, mm -hmm. really concerned about the prison system and the problems and the challenges and what have you. And as I sat there, I thought, we can address this issue. Mm -hmm but we're not going to fix the real problem. Mm -hmm. Because I remembered that during a workshop, by the way, one of the bylines for the midnight basketball is no workshop, no jump shot. <laughs> so in order for them to play basketball, All they right. have to attend a workshop. Got it. Conflict resolution, relationship building, mm -hmm. goal setting, so and the good. list goes on and on. And I remember during one of the workshops that of about 150 kids in three uh, different locations, 70% mm -hmm. of them mm -hmm. came from a single parent household where mom was the head of household. Mm -hmm. No father figure. Yeah. So statistics say that usually about another 50% of those uh. will end up repeating the cycle that their parents or their fathers yeah. have gone through. I felt the Spirit of God just really mm -hmm. quickened my spirit. Mm -hmm. It says, you can talk about returning citizens all day long, mm -hmm. and yes, we will address that. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we need to take care of this generation. Mm -hmm. Because if we can get engaged in taking care of this generation, mm -hmm. the legacy is going to go way beyond you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what you do mm -hmm. while you're still alive, mm -hmm. though it's important. 
at the end of the day, I'm just setting a foundation mm -hmm. so that it can impact my daughters, mm -hmm. my daughter's children, exactly. and so on yeah. and so forth. Yeah. Uh, and, and then years to come, people can look back at our region and say, the reason we do not have the same statistics we had 20 years ago, 30, 40 years ago, mm -hmm. was because people started to do something yeah. about educating our kids. That's right. So yeah. that to me is extremely, extremely important. So to your so, question, I'm sorry, yeah, so how, yeah. how, does, how does that link in? Link in? But I do want to just well? mention, because you just brought up such a powerful, so mentoring has to do with legacy. It's, it's, Agreed, more, yes. it's beyond just this lifetime. Mentoring needs to be focused on what are we leaving our kids, yeah. right? H hence, we, hence why we started doing this as something outside of our ministry. Although our ministry is involved, yeah. this is not about personal kingdom building. Mm, I think this whole that. mindset of, yeah. uh, you and I were talking yeah, earlier about yeah. this is living in the silo. Yeah. We, we have to go beyond that mindset. Yeah. And uh, I, I like to call it the ecclesiastical um, Partnership cohesiveness, mm -hmm. right? So in layman's terms, is how, how, does, how does a church mm -hmm. serve as a leading institution? I think mm -hmm. Tony Campolo in his mm -hmm. book, uh, Re uh, Revolution and Renewal, yeah. coined that. Uh, a leading institution mm -hmm. and serve as uh, this hub that can partner mm -hmm. different entities from mm -hmm. our community mm -hmm. to work toward mentoring our, our, our younger generation, right? Yeah. Educating, engaging, and empowering yeah. a rising generation. Yeah. So when we talk about institutions, we're talking about school district, universities, law enforcement, government, and the church. Mm. Five like entities yeah. working together mm -hmm. to educate, engage, and empower mm -hmm. our rising generation. So what blocks that from happening? What, what blocks those, those five coming together and the church serving as a hub? I, I think two things. I think for the most part, uh, well, I, I don't want to generalize it, but for me, yeah. the environment that I grew up in, yeah. Um, we, we, uh, we did not get involved. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was church. Mm -hmm. I remember, I still remember vividly, mm -hmm. my fingers holding onto a chain link fence, yeah. wanting to try out for softball, for Little League. Okay. And my parents saying, you can't do it. And you can't do it because it's going to coincide. It's going to it's co conflict, conflict with church. Mm. We've got church on practice days, on game days. Something didn't sit right. And, and I don't blame them for that. Right. They, they, they were doing sure, what they, they knew trying. to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, but now that I'm, that I'm older and the Spirit of God has been working with me and, and looking at my daughters and looking at, at our generation, yeah. I'm thinking we've got to go beyond that mindset. We have to go beyond having church on yeah. Wednesdays and Sundays yeah. and get out into the marketplace and collaborate with other entities mm -hmm. for the sake of, and I, I won't get tired of saying this, mm -hmm. of educating, engaging, and empowering yep. a rising generation. That's right. Yeah, there is this kind of trend, you know, recently it's been coined the, the Benedict Option um, of isolating ourselves from public life, whether right. that be right. the government or schools or whatever that looks like. And so it's interesting that you're, you're talking about the church being the hub of not being about isolation as much as, uh, you know, I've heard it termed, um, my pastor Brian Lightsey says, um, insulation. Mm. That no matter where you're at, that you are being in the world, but not of the world. So that you, there's an insulation of being who Christ has created you to be, salt, light. Agreed. But you're still within that public sphere because that's what we're called to do. And you can't, you can't be that salt in life if you're light if you're not there. Yeah. So, and of course, Reverend Sam Rodriguez has this powerful message on his heart of being light being and light. what that looks like. And so, yeah, let's, let's talk about silos. So what, what can churches do that would, meet, would be uh, purposeful in, create, in not creating and avoiding silos, but working with this ecclesiastical, uh, what did you call it? The ecclesial? Ecclesiastical partnership cohesiveness. Yeah. Yeah, I love that right. ecclesiastical yeah. partnership cohesiveness. So, Absolutely. what does that? What what needs to be in place for that to happen? Number one, we must admit that it goes beyond us. Mm. It's not about me. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's we have to come against the Wiffum mentality. Mm. What's in it for me? Yeah. The church suffers from the Wiffum mentality. I love it. The Wiffum yeah. mentality. Wiffum mentality. What's yes. in it for me? We've got to go beyond that. And number two, That's we have great. to be fully present. Yeah. In a in an age of. Um, so much social media mm -hmm. and people's heads are buried mm -hmm. in technology. Yeah. We've got to take a moment to look up mm -hmm. and really notice, be fully present mm -hmm. to what's happening around us. Mm -hmm. and, and it isn't until we're fully present that we're going to realize that 
our children need us. Yeah. Our communities need us. Yeah. So we have to walk out of our temples, walk out of our churches, walk mm -hmm. out of our centers, and begin to get engaged in the community and say, if I'm going to be light, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to walk out of our four walls. Yeah, to see those felt needs, right? To see At those least. felt needs. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Destino. They're uh, the Hispanic focus of the Campus Crusade for Christ, okay. which is now crew. And they talk a lot about like needing those felt needs yeah. and looking for what that student needs. Like, do they need laundry detergent? <laughs> do they need right, right, coins so right. that they can, like, wash their clothes? Yeah. Like, do, do they need a, a warm meal? What do they need yeah. that's going to help them propel and, and go to the next level in education? You know, let, let me tell you in practicality, look mm -hmm. what this looks like. Mm -hmm. Every Friday night, mm -hmm. we have dozens upon dozens of volunteers mm -hmm. from about 9.30 at night to midnight mm. serving uh, uh, our young people between yeah. the ages of 12 to 18 years of age. Mm -hmm. We provide food every single Friday night. Mm. Three separate cities, uh, five different locations. is going out to eight locations this coming wow. season. Wow. Uh, every single Friday night. So yeah. people are engaged. Yeah. They're feeding. They're mentoring. Yeah. They're playing basketball. They're yeah. facilitating workshops. Yeah. The universities are engaged wow. in facil facilitating those workshops. The government is, the police department is engaged, playing basketball with our young people, wow. having conversations, yeah. really just destroying these preconceived notions that some of our young people have of police, police officers. Yeah. Wow. That, to me, is being fully present and being engaged in our community. So how do you get all those volunteers together? Do you have a separate meeting for them? Or how does that, what does the funding look for to, like, for feeding that many people? Uh, volunteers, uh, churches. And that's where the, this, this is where the church serves as the hub. Yeah. Uh, because it's not a third-day worship, it, it, it cannot be a third-day mm -hmm. worship center thing or, yeah. uh, uh, you know, uh, this and that church. Yeah. It has to be a partnership. Yeah. We have to go across the board and say, let's work together. Yeah. Yeah. Because our community depends on it. Yeah. So, what do you see with grades? Does it impact those students' grades, or what are you hearing back? It does. In education? One of uh, one of the uh, one of the elements of the project is to uh, establish goal setting. Yeah. So they come in and we walk them through. So if you have a D, how are we going to get from a D to a C, from a C to a yeah. B, and so on and so forth? And then we follow that process yeah. as part of the mentoring component. That's exciting. Well, you know, we have about a minute and a half left, and I want to make sure that our viewers hear directly yeah. from you. If we have a viewer who's thinking about mentoring, who's thinking about how to stay engaged or maybe tempted to kind of withdraw from public mm. life, what message do you have for them? Can you just talk directly to viewers and, and share that with them? Yeah, absolutely. The first thing is don't withdraw because you never know the impact a word and embrace can make in the life of a child. I remember looking at a child one day and saying, I believe in you. And, and I was getting ready to walk away. And he stopped me, he says, what do, you, what do you mean you believe in me? No one has ever told me that. I had to be fully present at that moment because I couldn't, I couldn't conceive how no one would have ever told or, or even make him feel like he was worth something. Um, be fully present. Let's, let us go outside of our four walls and begin to engage in embracing and loving and speaking life. And as Reverend Rodriguez says, in being light in the midst of darkness. Mm -hmm. Listen, we can worship on Sunday. We can praise on Sunday. We can listen to good sermons on Sunday. But my question is, what type of impact are we going to make in our community mm -hmm. the moment Monday comes around? So find organizations. Work with your church. Work, work with your community. Get involved. Perhaps it's not mentoring, but you may be able to provide the food. Maybe you can work with law enforcement. There's something that you can do to empower, to educate, to engage this rising generation. Please do so. That is so good. Thank you for being here. Be involved. And we are just so excited that we had Pastor Olmeda speak to us about getting engaged, remembering.